Hey everyone, what we're going to do today is my Pro Ball smallmouth jig. In the vise is a 1 8 ounce ball head jig with eye sockets with a 1 aught owner 5313 jig hook. And as you can see on the collar right here, I have a little groove cut out. And that's just to help give us some extra flair on our skirt material. Uh, it's not going to be like a true puffball style jig, but we do want a little extra flair. The color is one It's called Copperhead. And it's basically just like a copper color with some green flake in there. Uh, it's perfect for this pattern, which I call it Amber Alert. Uh, which is just my version of Mango Magic. That's all it is. But uh, we're going to get started here with some black 210 denier flat wax nylon thread. And it's going to put a small base right in that little groove there. Just a couple wraps to keep it from coming undone when I put the skirt material in. And this is really easy, but it's a really good jig. It'll probably take me longer to explain it while I'm doing it than actually tie it. But we're using one, uh, one tab of material, and it's all the same color. It's this. This is pumpkin with green and orange flake in it. There is some black flake in it. Uh, and what I did was I took one tab and cut it in half because it's going to be folded over so basically we're going to have the equivalent of two tabs worth of material on here so what I'm going to do first is we're going to about, about 60 40 we're going to have about 60 percent down below the head and about 40 percent above uh, and I'm going to tie this first half a tab not tight, just lightly on one side, and we're going to fold it over, and we're going to make a wrap. You want to make sure our material stays where it's at, but I don't want to pull it tight just yet. So there's our first one second one again these are half tabs uh, 11 strands there's 22 on this up top here we're gonna fold it over and make a wrap there then you take one of these clips and just clip my material down on the top here just to hold it a little bit doesn't have to be major right now and now when I'm making these wraps I am really pulling I'm getting some good tension that's what's gonna help our skirt flare out And I want to make sure my thread is hitting the bottom and the top of that groove. That groove is only a, uh, about 3 30 seconds of an inch wide. So now I'm just about at the end of the groove with my thread wraps. I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to take another little clip and now we're going to put in a little wire weed guard and I don't know if you could see but I have a little hook there it's like a little candy cane and what I do is I'm going to hook that with the thread Just make a couple wraps to hold it in place. And I'm going to take some super glue brush on. But rather than use the brush, I'm going to take a toothpick. 
because I want it all in a specific spot. And there we are with the glue. And this is the worst part of this is making sure that we get our wire we guard tied in correctly because it will tend to want to move on you. That's why we have that glue in there to help set it up and make it pretty tough. And that's what we're going to use too to uh, coat the threads. We're going to use super glue instead of the Loctite and the reason being is it's just going to um, make it a little more sturdy even though I, I'm confident in the thread wraps I still like having that extra security of the glue and we're gonna whip finish this I told you it's pretty simple pretty simple do is take that off of here. Maybe you should have left that. Um, we'll flip it around this way. It's easier. Two, three, four, five, and six cinch it and do four more one two three and four that's good enough now i'm going to take a little bit of this loctite super glue brush on And you notice I did hit that before I cut my uh, thread. And that's just force of habit because I always... One, two, three. I want to do that just to make it a little bit easier for myself that I'm not getting uh, glue stuck to me. I started doing that a while ago. If I have to use the glue and it wants to stick... And put a couple extra wraps on top of it and after I whip finish it and then I don't got to worry about it. It's a, a bizarre step but nothing you need to be concerned about. It's just something I do for the camera. Now what I'm going to do with my weed guard here is I'm going to get my strands here, separate it, and I'm going to bend that weed guard down at the collar. I'm going to take a pair of pliers. These pliers are great. They're flat jawed. There's no teeth in here. They won't hurt nothing. This is great for mashing down, um, mashing down hook barbs, and it's also good. You know, you won't mar anything with it. And it's great for thread because you could push down on thread with this, and you won't damage thread at all. So our weed guard is in position. Uh, need to reach and get me some scissors, some big scissors. And what we want to do is just, uh, just a little bit below where the tab is fused together. There we go. That looks about right. And then we'll cut our loops free here. make sure I get them all okay now the last part and that's going to be our trailer and all it is uh, this is in the way here I'll get this out real quick this is just a um, poor boys Erie darter jr. in mango magic 
And what I do, do I still have, I have one more loop. Sorry about that. I thought I had them all. What I do is I turn this upside down. And I thread on my little eerie darter. It comes out about the, the fourth uh, little rib. See, and this is where that making that little extra wrap around the collar with the glue. Um, if I didn't do that, what would happen is all my strands would be stuck to that uh, the thread collar. And I make sure I get it all the way up on there. And we are done. That is our Pro Ball smallmouth jig. I know it doesn't look like much, but it really is. It's a killer profile, little wire weed guard edition. You don't have to do that. I don't do it with all of them. Uh, when I fish this in lakes, um, I, I like to have that because a lot of times I'm fishing around some... Uh, brush piles and things of that nature. Uh, but mostly it keeps me from getting jammed in the rocks. But that's it. That's a, a, a neat little uh, profile. And if before I go, um, this is the quarter ounce version with the 2-watt 5313. Uh, when I'm fishing deeper, that's this 8-ounce one, um, like 2 to 6 feet deep. And then when I go a little deeper, we go with the quarter ounce, you know, down to about 10 feet or so. And to cut that groove, I just take a, a cheap pair of diagonal cutters. I put it up there. And I just spin it around while keeping pressure on it. And you see just that little bit, I got a groove already started. Um, don't use a good one. You'll dull them up. But just get a, a go to Harbor Freight or whatever and get a cheap pair of diagonal cutters. On watching TV, I could do 20 or 30 or 30 of these in, you know, 45 minutes or so. And then I can just tie them up and I'm ready to go to the lake. And there you have it. Well, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you next week.